Okay, so now that you've downloaded the address management tools um, and hopefully you've uh, installed the add-ins for both Attribute Assistant and Address Management tools, uh, now that you've got those and you set up and you're ready to do some, some editing, uh, I want to kind of walk through here the editing process and what the tools we can take advantage of. Um, so first of all, um, once you install the add-in, now you'll have uh, Attribute Assistant available under your toolbars. So you'll see an Attribute Assistant. You can toggle that on. You're going to get this toolbar here uh, called Attribute Assistant. What you'll notice here with the Attribute Assistant toolbar is you have a toggle here. This green means the Attribute Assistant is off and red means it's on. Um, in this case, I'm going to turn it on and uh, it'll show up as green and that will make it active at this point. So now we'll take a look here at uh, some of the other things that come um, with this. I may not have mentioned this last video, but we do have some tables that are generated that are part of the local government model that we need plugged in here. So we want to make sure we have at a minimum address points, site address points, our road center line layer, as well as these three tables, dynamic value, generated generate ID, and master street name. And we're going to use these tables in our uh, tools. So let's get into it here. Let's start our editor. I'm going to start an edit session here. And what I'm going to do is come over to, and you'll notice you have a new tool here. When I select uh, site address points, I'm going to create a new site address point. So I'm going to select there. You'll notice I have a new tool here uh, that is part of the address management uh, add-in. It says add site address point. What I'm going to do is select that. Then you'll see as I come over here to my road center lines and I hover over my road center line, you'll see the numbers pop up there that show the odd and even address of where I'm located along that roadway. So if I have a new site, I'm going to add an address uh, for the site address. I'm going to click here on the center line at the entrance location. Then I'm going to double click at the location of my structure. So say in this case I got an empty lot but there's a new building going up. I'm going to double click there and what you see the results is it adds an address point at the center line at the road center line and it adds a site address point on the site and the neat thing is what it does is it, it populates that information if we look here on the site address point that we just added it automatically grabbed my highest site address point ID, my address point ID, and my road name information, and my house number, it automatically populated all this information. And you're wondering, well, how did it do that? Well, what it's doing is it's grabbing information from those tables that we looked at earlier. So if we go down here, and we're going to look at what we call the dynamic value table. And we come in here and we see if we find our road center lines, We'll see right here, this, this is what Attribute Assistant does, is it looks to this table called Dynamic Value Table. In here it says, look at my road center line layer, go to the field name that says full name, in this case it's talking about the road name. It's going to validate or look up the attribute information in my master street name table. And it's going to validate to make sure that that name is actually in there and that's how it populates Wisconsin Street in this case. With the, uh, with the others, if we look in here, we'll also notice under site address point, site address ID, which in this case is up here, site address ID 22096. That's coming from the generate ID command. And it's getting that if we look at our generate ID table. And we'll go here to site address point or site address ID, the highest number is 22096. And you'll see that that's what it just populated with. What it does is it grabs that highest number and then it actually, your number in this table will increase based on your interval value. So in this case, it's just adding one to that, to that interval. Each time I add a new address point, it's going to do that by default. And that's a way to make sure you're always grabbing the highest number in your data set is using that and again we'll go back to our dynamic value table this is the line in the table that it uses to look that up so it's saying 
find my site address ID command in my generate table. So here it is in my generate ID table. And then add the initials or the uh, abbreviation SID for site address ID dash. And then you see this SEQ in square brackets. That's where it's grabbing the sequence counter. That's where it's grabbing this number here. So we go back to our dynamic value. That's how all this data in the attribute information is being populated as I add that new site address point. So just to repeat that point, um, the attribute assistant requires these two tables in order to work properly. It does require the dynamic value table as well as the generate ID table, if you have that called out in there. Those two tables are very necessary for the attribute assistant to work properly. Now, one thing that you'll see if we go back to the dynamic value table, if we scroll over, you'll see these fields that say on create, on change, on change geometry, change attribute, manual only, and rule weight. These fields have to do with what is controlled in the attribute assistant toolbar. As we hovered over these, it says run changes, change rules for selected features. So if I select my features there and I run change rules, it's going to ask me, are you sure you wish to apply the change rules for these selected features? I'm going to click yes. What that's doing is it's looking in my table and it's seeing what do I have here. Uh, it's saying, is there a one, which would mean yes, run the, when I change attributes, run this, this command line. Or if it's zero, it means no, ignore it. So that's how these tools determine which, which ones to run. I could also say run manual to manual rules only for the selected features. So in this case, where I see my site address ID counter, the sequence counter, it's not going to run when I do manual rules because I have a zero in this column. So that is something that is, and then I can also run the create separately. So that's some of the tools in the attribute assistant. That's what they're doing in that case. Then lastly, what I want to look at is what's called the master street name table. This is a very important table. If we'll see here in the dynamic value table, we'll see this master street name table referenced. And it's right here. And it's a validate or lookup table. And it's looking up the street name. It's looking up information on my roadway. So if I come here, I want to use this as an example. I'm going to say, okay, let's look at this particular street segment. It's called Wisconsin Street. Say I want to change this uh, information here. Okay, I'm gonna say I want to change the road name. I'm gonna type in and try to edit that here in my attribute box. I'm gonna say Wisconsin State Street, and then I'm gonna hit Enter. Well, you'll see it's given me a warning. It says the property values cannot change. It cannot be changed. The reason is it looks to my master street name table and it does not find Wisconsin Street anywhere. It, excuse me, it doesn't find Wisconsin State Street. It does find, however, Wisconsin Street, um, and it's in here. Wisconsin Street is in here. I wanted to validate that that is there, in fact. And it looks for that. In this case, um, you can see that it will not let me change that. Now, now, if, however, I come in here and let's just say, let's use wit white tech we'll call it and I'm gonna say uh, white tech we'll just add an ly white tech Lee and it says you're about to change nine rows in the road center line feature class do you want to proceed those nine rows that it's changing our street segments in the road center line feature class it's going to change the name on those just because I changed it in one place here and I'm gonna click no because I don't want to do that in this situation and it's going to go ahead and um, then I'm going to change that back here. So that's important to understand this master street name table is a unique list of all the road names in your road center line feature class. And that's a very valuable for maintaining address information and having your road names properly named and having unique names. So that's pretty much everything we wanted to cover today uh, on the 
attribute assistant and address management tools. I wanted to just show you some of the highlights there on what you can do with those very valuable tools to be able to take advantage of. Right now they are in ArcMap, uh, ArcMap tools. I do not, ArcGIS Pro um, attribute assistant is configured a little differently in there and these tools are not available at this time in Pro, however they will be in the future. Uh, but thanks for watching today. Hopefully learned a little about uh, how to help maintain and update your address information. Mm -hmm.